in case you're following along in your Bible, um, once again, the, uh, the location of this one is, uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 5. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I know this is a string of verses, but uh, just bear with me, I'm going to read through them and at the end I'll talk a little bit more, and uh, hopefully that will help you come to a decision of whether you want to um, incorporate drinking or uh, unincorporate, either or, not unincorporate, I can't think of the right word, uh, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. Uh, the next place I'm going to show you is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, starting in verse 31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks. Oh, that's about where I wanted to stop. Never mind. Sometimes when I get to reading the Bible, I just uh, kind of lose track and keep going. Uh, then go back to verse 23. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. And uh, we're going through 24. All things are lawful, but not all things are uh, build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Um, then turn, if you will, to chapter 8, uh, starting in verse 7. There it is here. And I'm going to read through 13. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not com commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees uh, you who have knowledge eating in, a, in an idol's uh, temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died, thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak. You sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Uh, and then one more in this string. It's Romans 14, uh, verse 21. Uh, it is good not to eat meat or drink drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Yeah, that's all I wanted to read there. Read there. So, uh, really, the, the overriding theme here seems to be, you know, uh, if we're Christians, we should be thinking not only of ourselves, but also of others. You know, uh, the two greatest commandments were love God and, and love people. You know, so... Um, in your drinking or in your lack of drinking, are you showing whatever you're doing? Are you showing love to God and love to people? Are you glorifying God with your actions? Whatever they are. Um, then also look at the history of alcohol. Uh, historically, is it anything righteous? Has it ever accomplished anything magnificent, something praiseworthy? Uh, Galatians tells us to think on good things like, um, I can't remember it exactly, it's, um, Whatsoever things are pure, uh, honest, it goes on and lists a few different things, and it says, think on these things. You know, it's the same kind of principle I want to apply to this. Um, alcohol's never created an uh, honorable name in the past. Uh, so when when you do par partake of alcohol, if you, if you do partake of alcohol, um, just keep in mind where its roots are, and with that, uh, also, if there's a history of alcoholism in your family, I would highly encourage you to stay away from alcohol. Um, it becomes a snare. Uh, families tend to have overriding things that they deal with. Um, usually, if a father has panic attacks, his son will have panic attacks, and his sons might have panic attacks, and it just kind of passes on alcoholism. You know, a father will do it, then his son will do it, then his son will do it, and it just becomes an overriding theme in the family. So, be aware if you uh, have decided to drink alcohol. Um, be aware of, uh, you know, if you need to be careful or not, more careful than the average person or not, based on whether it runs in your family or not.
um, uh, what I would advise is to drink in private so you don't cause uh, another fall. That's my own personal opinion. That is not from the Bible. That is my own personal opinion. Uh, but I guess uh, if you look at those verses that I read, you can kind of uh, draw an application of that. Um, yeah, uh, but if, you're, uh, if your brother finds out, though, that you're drinking in, pu in private, uh, that also might become a snare, though, because if you do it in private, chances are it'll be seen as wrong. So if your brother sees you do it, it might put him in a worse off situation than if he would have just seen you drinking in a bar. I'm saying. Um, that's, once again, something that you're just going to have to work out with in prayer and in your personal Bible study time and uh, with your conscience. Uh, I just want to make the uh, resources available to you to figure out what you believe. Um, James 4.17 is one more that I wanted to read. Um, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Um, if you know in your heart that drinking is wrong for you, uh, and you do it anyways, it's sin for you, see. Uh, you know, an another thing is what's going on with the culture around you. Um, where you grow at up at depends a lot of what you believe growing up. Um, so a lot of the things that I'm saying might cause you to kind of question yourself uh, and your motives. And uh, I'm not trying to cause you to stumble. I'm just trying to help you find the place where you know what you believe and why you believe. Um, to some people, drinking is, is sin. To some people, it is not. But if you're one of the people who don't think that it's a sin to drink, uh, watch out that you don't lead someone who does think it is a sin to drink uh, into sin. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be a stumbling block to something. Also, be aware if you have kids or if kids, um, excuse me, can see you, um, it's never a good thing to mislead a child. Uh, you know, uh, there's a few things in the Bible that God just really, really presses, you know, uh, caring for children caring for widows, caring for orphans, things like that. Um, so just make sure whatever you decide to do, make sure that it's right by, by make sure it's right by, by God and by others and by you. Um, one thing I will say is, uh, some people might say, oh, well, do you drink? I personally do not drink because I'm often in a role of leadership in a uh, church setting or in some other ministry setting and I find it makes a better witness to the people who I'm witnessing to um, if I don't partake of alcohol. Um, I'm not saying that I do not believe that Christians can drink, once again. I think it's clear that Christians cannot get drunk. But as to whether they can drink or not, I am not going to say yes or no on that. Um, I think that everybody needs to, uh, needs to pray, spend time in, in the Word, and know whether they should or not before they make a, cho a choice. Um, but yeah, as for me, um, as a leader, it's kind of difficult to... It's kind of difficult to tell somebody, you know, well, I'm, I'm a Christian and then be a leader and do these things in the church where everybody has their eyes on you, and then uh, do something like drink. It often it often sends confusing messages, and the last thing I want to do is make the gospel hard to understand or make it where uh, somebody doesn't see genuine Christ in me uh, by me doing a stupid, selfish thing like drink, you know? I mean, if I really, really, really like the alcohol and the taste of alcohol, I'm sure there's ways, ways I can drink um, uh, in modesty, moderately. Uh, without showing it off to the world, um, you know. For instance, uh, married people have sex. Uh, you know, it's right for them to have sex because they're married. Um, 
but still you don't show everybody else uh, videos of you having sex with your wife or pictures of you having sex with your wife or you don't let other people watch you have sex with your wife. Um, so yeah, I think that wraps it up. Uh, I hope that that answers your questions about uh, Christians and drinking alcohol. Um, I just wanted to uh, help you guys find out what the Bible says and help you make your own decision. Um, so I hope that cleared up some of the confusion that maybe you were having. Uh, if you have a differing opinion that you think other people would enjoy hearing, uh, post it below in the comments section. Um, just the only thing I ask is keep foul language off, you know, no, no cursing of any kind, uh, uh, and no, um, no foul, no, like, obscene kind of language, no coarse joking. I mean, keep it, keep it Christian, keep it G-rated, keep it where if my, my little six-year-old nephew saw it and read it, he wouldn't be, I wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't be damaged mentally or spiritually or physically or any other way. Um... But yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and uh, God bless. Um, I hope you guys really delve into your spiritual study time, and uh, until next time, uh, you guys um, stay strong.